so as a brand new teacher, brand new math teacher at Cedar Grove, um, the very first thing that students see when they walk in is me standing at the door. Um, so I certainly want to make sure that I'm, I'm dressed professionally and, you know, standing with a smile on my face, ready to greet them. Um, because, I mean, students aren't exactly, you know, excited to go back to school. The summer's just ended. Uh, so I definitely want to welcome them. Uh, but in the beginning, I think it's extremely important just to, um, just to set the tone in the classroom, just so that they know um, just kind of the, the rules and regulations of the classroom, uh, the, the expectations from, from them, expectations for me as a teacher, and just helping them a little bit to understand that, okay, while I may be young, um, I'm certainly still your teacher, you know, someone that you should see um, as a figure of authority. Um, someone that you can look to for, for knowledge, for guidance, but not someone that you can go hang out with, you know. So I think that's extremely important. As, so last year, I was here at Cedar Grove as um, basically a student teacher. And so I got to know my students, really developed a rapport with them, but I was working alongside my mentor teacher. It was always Miss Reeves and Miss Jackson. I think that one thing that I'm really looking forward to this school year is figuring out what is it that um, students should come into my class expecting from Miss Reeves's class. Um, you know, what is, what is the culture going to be like in my classroom? Um, and outside of that, I just, both, both courses that I'm teaching, um, there is a a big test at the end. So the geometry students have their end of course test, the AP calculus students have their AP exam. And I, I understand as a first year teacher, I won't have all fives. You know, I, 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 may, not have per I may not have perfect scores on the end of course test, but um, success for me would just be knowing that by the end of the school year, my students can say, wow, looking back, this may have been challenging, but I understand this now. Um, I understand how these concepts relate to real life. Um, I'm proud to say that though I struggled with, I don't know, algebra, quadratics in the beginning of the year, now I feel really confident about it. I just want to see that my students have progressed over the school year and have um, just an increased level of confidence in themselves and maybe even just um, more interest in math itself. Well, I think the most important thing to help students um, love math, or maybe not even love math, just to like math a little bit more than they may have before, is just to help them see how it's relevant in their lives. Uh, I feel like a lot of times there, there's always that gap there. It's just kind of like, well, I'm in this math class. What am I learning this for? How am I going to use this? How is this relevant to me? And then also just, just being there to encourage them. Um, I feel like a lot of times it's just, well, you know, I've never, I've never done that great in my math classes. Or I, one that I've heard a lot was, I used to be good at math, but when I got to high school or, you know, when I got to eighth grade, I'm not anymore. So just, just kind of taking a step back from there and saying, okay, well, um, let's just take a more optimistic approach. Um, you know, it's not, it's not that you're bad at math, it just may be that you just need to brush up on a few skills. And um, as we go through the year, as we sit in tutorial and just kind of um, pinpoint what some of those struggles are, then it's like, oh, I get it now. It's always exciting to see when they start building that confidence in themselves. Um, and I mean, it's, it's clear, it's clear in their work uh, when they've gone from that mindset that, that they had before to like, okay, I do kind of like math, or, or maybe I'm not so bad at math. So when I left college, I, um, I started working for GE Healthcare in finance, and uh, I worked initially in the two-year rotational program. And I was really excited about it. I wasn't totally sure what I wanted to do out when I graduated, so it was awesome that I had this opportunity. I figured, why not try finance? And I learned a ton, but it just kind of got to a point where I felt like I was just going through the motions. Um, I wouldn't say that I wasn't challenged. I can't say that I wasn't learning a lot, but it's just when I realized that the, the highlight of my day was more so just my interactions with, with people, my 
ability to help other people with their issues and not so much the the spreadsheets that I was working in the data that I was um, working through each day and then also while I was um, working in finance I was still tutoring I I had worked at the Howard Mill School while I was um, doing my undergraduate degree and I loved it and I just never got away from that so when I was tutoring it was just once a week and I realized like wow you know I wake up so happy on Thursdays ah, Thursdays my tutoring day and that became the highlight of my week and I said you know what why is it that I'm still running from something that I know that I enjoy and I, I remember the day it was the it was um, January 1st and right after New Year's and I sat down on the couch and I decided to make just kind of like a four blocker. Uh, pros of finance, cons of finance, pros of teaching, cons of teaching. And I spent time and I just wrote it out, just wrote whatever came to mind. Pros of finance, flexibility of schedule, um, and the money. Pros of teaching, it was just, I mean, it was just so many things. And it was that moment where I just made, made that decision. I said, I can't, I can't live my life based on how much money I'm going to make. I need to be happy in what I'm doing, happy in my career. And I really do feel like, you know, when, when passion meets purpose, I mean, it's a beautiful thing. And I, I truly feel like it's just quality of life has just increased immensely. I've, I've left the Midwest and come back down south. And I'm doing something that, that I enjoy. With the Woodrow Wilson Fellowship, I worked on my master's, uh, master's in teaching uh, full time. I worked full time at Cedar Grove High School alongside a mentor teacher. And I also received a stipend. So I was still able to be supported financially, but able to make that transition into education. It was always evident that the teachers who just really cared about making sure I along with my peers just understood and not saying okay I taught this and let's move on um, and I feel like that has been the reason I've been so successful in my math classes to date just because I had teachers who really wanted to make sure that we understood and not just okay well um, just at a surface level but understanding why we need to know these things how they relate to the real world and that's kind of the approach that I try to take as a teacher. I think back to my favorite teachers when I was in school and almost kind of mimic those things that I that I really enjoyed as a student. It is very tough to not fully devote 100 percent 24 hours of my day uh, to my students just because of you know the passion that I have for teaching. I, I really, really do care about my students. I'm, I'm fully invested in them and their lives and their success. Um, but for me, it's just I have to make the conscious decision to say, okay, you know, on these days, this is my time. You know, on, on Saturday, I am just going to do whatever I want to do. And then on Sunday, I'll get back to, to lesson planning or, or, or whatever it might be. Just trying to find the, trying to find the balance. One thing that I really hope and wish that my students, as well as their parents, understand about me is that I am 100% on their side, in their corner, rooting for them every step of the way. I'm not going to give up on them. I don't care if uh, they come in and say, I absolutely hate math. I don't care if they just, um, you know, tell me math is their, favorite, their uh, least favorite subject. I am 100% invested in making sure that my students have the tools and the skills that they need to be successful, um, just successful learners in general and successful in their math courses, uh, just because I, I really do care.